the people around the, the Sussexes were quite, you know, happy with them and they were quite excited. But, you know, the, the mood from the general public was, why is this happening? Why is the Nigerian military spending all this money? You know, Nigeria is not a particularly very well developed country. There's a lot of poverty in the country. So they didn't really see the kind of point of this. Today, we're addressing claims made by Esther Krako regarding the Sussexes' recent journey to Nigeria. Krake suggests that the trip was pointless and criticized by the Nigerian public. However, we'll explore the real impact of this visit, which focused on the Invictus Games, mental health awareness, and women empowerment. Let's delve into the facts and set the record straight. First, let's dissect what Esther Crack actually claimed. In her commentary, Esther suggested that Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's trip to Nigeria was met with confusion and disapproval from the general populace. Her narrative pivots on the idea that while the Sussexes' entourage might have been supportive, the broader Nigerian public struggled to understand the purpose of their visit. So there have been people that did go to Nigeria um, to see out the royal tour. And they said, you know, the people around the, the Sussexes were quite, you know, happy with them and they were quite excited. But, you know, the, the move from the general public was, why is this happening? Why is the Nigerian military spending all this money? You know, Nigeria is not a particularly very well developed country. There's a lot of poverty in the country. So they didn't really see the kind of point of this, especially because they're not representing any, the, the United Kingdom. They're just there on a sort of a private tour um, for their charity. Uh, but it, it's it's been quite mixed, I would say. I mean, this is probably as good as it gets for the Sussexes. The question is, what next? They can't keep going back to Nigeria. She paints a picture of bewilderment, questioning why the Nigerian military was allocating substantial funds for what she implies was a non-essential visit. Esther's remarks carry a tone of skepticism, bordering on cynicism. She insinuates that the trip was futile, hinting that it served no real purpose other than perhaps a chance for the Sussexes to parade themselves, risking becoming mere objects of mockery in future endeavors. These assertions not only challenge the effectiveness of the visit, but also attempt to overshadow the positive engagements and initiatives that were part of the trip. Now, with these remarks in mind, let's compare them to the actual outcomes and reactions from the trip. What was the real reaction from Nigerians? Delving into the heart of Nigeria, the visit of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle was met with enthusiasm and respect, far from the indifference suggested by some commentators. Across bustling markets, serene campuses, and vibrant community centers, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex were embraced with open arms. In Lagos, a city pulsating with energy, local newspapers like The Guardian Nigeria heralded their arrival with headlines praising their commitment to social causes. The paper highlighted their engagements with local youth and leaders in discussions that spanned from mental health to women's empowerment. The Nigerian Tribune, another well-respected publication, offered insights into the couple's visit to a veteran's hospital. Their article shared heartfelt testimonials from military veterans who appreciated the Sussex's genuine interest and support. One veteran remarked, It's uplifting to see global figures advocating for issues that affect us directly. Their presence brings hope and attention to our struggles. Social media platforms buzzed with positive sentiments as well. Numerous posts and tweets showcased pictures of the Sussexes interacting with crowds with captions expressing admiration for their down-to-earth approach and ongoing humanitarian efforts. Local radio stations aired interviews with attendees of various Sussex events, where callers expressed their excitement and shared stories of inspiration drawn from the encounters. Contrary to Esther's portrayal, it seems the reception was quite warm. Beyond the warm welcomes, what tangible initiatives did the Sussexes contribute to in Nigeria? In a whirlwind of activity, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle took Nigeria by storm, not just with their presence, but with substantial contributions to significant causes. The couple's dedication to the Invictus Games, mental health awareness, and women empowerment was clearly evident through their engagements. Firstly, the Sussexes made a poignant stop at a local rehabilitation center where they interacted with military veterans. This visit was not just a photo op, but a strategic move to draw attention to the Invictus Games, an international sporting event for wounded, injured, or sick armed services personnel and their associated veterans. The games are a beacon of hope, showcasing the power of sports therapy in recovery and rehabilitation. 
Harry's involvement brought a spotlight not only to the event but also to the ongoing support needed for these brave individuals. Moreover, mental health, a cause close to both Harry and Meghan's hearts, was prominently featured in their discussions with local leaders. They participated in workshops aimed at reducing stigma around mental health issues. These workshops, often coupled with community outreach programs, have been reported to increase awareness and understanding, paving the way for a more supportive environment for mental health discussions in Nigeria. On the front of women empowerment, Megan shone brightly. She engaged with women entrepreneurs and leaders in various sectors, from technology to textiles. Her meetings aim to inspire and empower women, providing them with platforms to voice their challenges and successes. Megan's influence was palpable, with local media later reporting an uptick in interest and support for women-led enterprises. These targeted initiatives by the Sussexes in Nigeria have fostered local and international partnerships, promising ongoing support and spotlight on these critical areas. The impact of their visit extends beyond their physical presence. It ignites conversations and actions that continue to resonate within the communities. These initiatives clearly demonstrate a focused and beneficial visit, not a pointless excursion. Now, let's address the concern about military spending. In Esther Crackey's commentary, questions were raised about the financial implications of the Sussexes' visit to Nigeria, specifically regarding the use of military funds. It's essential to peel back the layers of this claim and examine the facts. Typically, high-profile visits by international figures involve security and logistical arrangements, which can include military involvement. However, this does not necessarily mean that extravagant or unnecessary expenses are burdened on the host country's military budget. In the case of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, their visit was aligned with their charitable endeavors, including the Invictus Games, mental health, and women empowerment. It's common for such trips to be funded through a combination of private and public sources, including sponsorships and collaborations with nonprofits. The narrative that suggests a heavy financial toll on Nigeria's military is not only misleading but overlooks the potential benefits and international attention such visits can bring. It appears the financial concerns were also misrepresented. So what can we take away from the Sussexes' trip to Nigeria? Firstly, it's evident that the visit carried significant positive impacts, particularly in the areas of military veteran support through the Invictus Games, mental health awareness, and women's empowerment. These are not just fleeting moments of charity, but deep-seated commitments that resonate with ongoing global conversations about social responsibility and mental health. Contrary to the claims made by Esther Cracky, the trip was not a superficial or unnecessary venture. Interviews and reports from local residents and participants highlight a different narrative, a narrative of inspiration and appreciation for the attention brought to critical issues affecting their communities. It's also worth noting that Ms. Crack's remarks about the general public's disinterest and the questioning of military spending do not align with the broader reception documented by various local and international media outlets. These discrepancies underscore the necessity for thorough fact-checking and the dangers of basing broad conclusions on limited viewpoints. Moreover, the discussions that have arisen from the Sussex's visit about military spending are important. They bring to light questions of national priorities and resource allocation, which are valid discussions in any country's socio-political discourse. In wrapping up, the visit by the Duke and Duchess of Sussex to Nigeria goes beyond mere royal tourism. It is a spotlight on critical issues that affect real people, and it's a call to action for ongoing support and understanding. It's crucial to look beyond the surface and understand the real stories. Thank you for joining me today on Royal Telly. Your engagement means the world to us as we continue to delve into the narratives that shape public perception. If you found today's discussion enlightening, please show your support. Hit like, leave a comment below, and don't forget to subscribe for more content that champions transparency and the commendable efforts of the Sussexes. Together, we can challenge misinformation and promote a narrative of positivity and progress. Remember, always seek the truth. Keep supporting positive change. Goodbye.